Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about diffraction and interference patterns, different patterns that uh, typically light is what we're going to look at will make when you shine it through one or more slits. Uh, this is going to be more qualitative, looking at the patterns themselves. Uh, we do have equations to deal with some of these things, but for uh, this video we're looking at the patterns themselves, how the intensity, uh, what the intensity of the light looks like in these different uh, exciting patterns. All right, here we go. So when light passes through a, an opening, um, just like any wave, when a light is an electromagnetic wave, and any wave will diffract, it will spread out through an opening, or it can also diffract around an obstacle. And so we're going to see a diffraction pattern. Um, here on the left, we have the pattern form when light passes through like a circular opening, and we get this interesting bullseye kind of pattern, very bright spot in the middle. And then we see these concentric rings of dark and bright and dark and bright and dark and bright. Um, here on the right is the pattern from light shining through a single slit. So similar in some ways, but it's going to be a, along a line. And I have this very bright uh, point in the middle. Then I do have these dark bands. And then bright dark, we call these fringes. So bright fringes, dark fringes. Um, so this is a diffraction pattern. There does seem to be some kind of interference happening because uh, I have dark spots and bright spots and dark spots and bright spots. This is not the same, though, as the two source interference pattern, which we'll look at. And this is where you will um, tend to have some tr uh, trouble. This can be tricky. Uh, so th do think of diffraction and interference differently, even though, as we'll see, especially with HL students, there is some interference going on behind the scenes within the diffraction. But this is just diffraction. So this is uh, light specifically going through one opening. So I essentially have one source. All right. So this is kind of what the patterns look like. Um, we will talk about how we can treat that one source as a whole bunch of sources and account for this interference with HL content. SL students, you don't need to worry about that. Here's a couple of different ways that you will see this drawn. Um, here's a picture that shows plane wave fronts coming in on the left and encountering some kind of opening. This represents the slit right here. So this is a wall, maybe light is shining through, it's shining through a small opening. Do remember to get the maximum amount of diffraction. The idea is that the size of your opening should be about the same size as the wavelength of the wave. If they're roughly on the same order of magnitude, you'll get some serious diffraction happening. If the wavelength is much bigger or much smaller than the size of the opening, you won't see nearly as much diffraction. All right, um, so we have, this is one way to draw this. This is kind of physically representing the diffraction pattern that would be formed on the screen. When we project, looks like this. We're drawing it sort of sideways. You might see this in some IB problems um, or simulations that we use. But there's the pattern visually, and then over here, additionally, we have a graph to show intensity versus position. Position would be along the screen this way, and so we're showing the intensity uh, horizontally like this. So this is representing very bright central maximum. Here it is uh, again, right side up. You want to be very familiar with this pattern. This is the single slit diffraction pattern. This shows intensity against position on the screen. So it's showing this very wide, bright central maximum. And then it turns out these secondary maxima are not nearly as bright. Um, so these are the things qualitatively you want to know about the pattern formed in single slit diffraction. You won't necessarily need to memorize this number. Um, but it's good to have a general sense that the secondary maxima, so this bright spot compared to this bright spot, is about 22 times less intense, which you can think of as more or less 22 times less bright. Uh, the pattern will change if you change the size of the opening, you can imagine. This pattern may change a little bit. It may spread out or tighten up, as well as with the wavelength. With green light versus red light, you will see differences. Again, the equation and mathematics of that HL students will cover. Just a couple more pictures of that diffraction pattern. So this is what we see when light shines through a single slit. Okay, to compare, to make a point of comparison, 
In two source interference, the intensity is different. So when we have our classic situation where we have perhaps two speakers creating sound waves, the IB likes that one, or two water, two different water waves that are interfering with each other. Um, or as we're going to see, we can do this with light. But if I just have two source interference and I'm using my two source interference equation, S equals lambda D over D. In that case, the intensity of all of the maxima is equal. So if you're doing the classic IB problem, where you're walking along a line near two speakers and you're hearing, you're walking through the, um, through the interference pattern and you're hearing loud spot, quiet spot, loud spot, quiet spot, loud spot, quiet spot. The loud spots are all equally loud, right? There's no diffraction happening. Um, it's all just constructive, destructive, constructive, destructive interference. So this is where we're going to get a little fuzzy maybe, but interference, the interference pattern from two source interference, you do want to think of as a separate idea than this diffraction pattern. All right, so if you were asked to graph the intensity of a two-source interference problem, it would look something like this. Maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum. Equally loud, equally quiet, however you want to think of it. Okay. Now we get to the exciting part, the experiment that combines them both, Young's double slit. It's a very famous experiment. Um, back in, uh, before the experiment, there was some debate, but um, light was thought to be a particle. Newton did a lot of work with treating light as a particle and basically little ping pong balls bouncing around. Throughout this course, you will see a lot of exciting stuff about how the history of how we've understood light has changed and has, uh, believe it or not, really changed how we fundamentally think about the universe. Um, but at this stage in physics history, let's say in the early 1800s, uh, a scientist named Thomas Young did a famous experiment, the double slit experiment. Here's a sort of photo of the experiment to give you a general sense. Again, this isn't something that you necessarily need to know every little bit of. Um, especially interesting, though, that, of course, in the 1800s, you did not have a laser beam. These days, it's much easier. You're probably doing this in class where we shine a laser through two slits and you see a pattern and the the long story short of this uh, experiment is that by shining light through two openings, creating two sources of light, essentially, um, he created a pattern that showed an interference pattern and showed, therefore, light behaving like a wave. Only wave would create an interference pattern. If light was really made of particles and shining through these slits, you would expect to see two kind of bands of light over here. Imagine ping pong balls being fired in this area. You would just see two little, you know, bands where they hit. But no, we see an interference pattern all across. So there is uh, interference happening, wave stuff is happening. This experiment demonstrated light as a wave. Probably one of the most important, like, pieces of knowledge to have about this experiment for all students, HL and SL, is that the double slit experiment gave us evidence that light was clearly behaving like a wave. A couple other pictures. Here's a general sort of pattern of what we see. We see these fringes, we call them, because they kind of fringe and taper off from bright to dark. But we see on the wall, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. A couple things to know about the double slit experiment. Um, we need coherent light, which means that the light is emitted in phase. Essentially, we want the two sources of light to be identical. Um, we will also want the light to be what we call monochromatic, which means one color. It will not really work with white light because remember white light has all of the colors of the rainbow and everything else um, as part of it. So I'll have all different wavelengths superimposed together. And so I won't get a clear interference pattern unless I have a single wavelength. So that's why we typically do this experiment with like a red laser, all one wavelength and coherent meaning they get emitted in phase. The crests and the crests, crests are lined up, the troughs are lined up for these two waves when they leave. All right, so we see this series of bright and dark spots, but the other thing we notice is that on top of the interference pattern, we also see diffraction because the light, while I have two sources of waves interfering with one another, the light is also diffracting through each opening. 
and so that diffraction pattern gets overlaid on the interference pattern. We're going to see both of those patterns combined. The IB says it this way, the two source pattern is modulated by the single slit diffraction event. All right, so let's look at a little bit of what that looks like. Here is what the pattern looks like for the double slit. So what this is showing you is up on top, this is our single slit diffraction pattern, big wide central maximum, then the secondary maxima gets smaller and smaller, kind of octopus looking graph that you will see. Down here, this is a two source interference pattern. Maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, all equally uh, intense at the maxima. Right in the middle is what it looks like. If I superimpose, if I add these two wave functions together, I get something like this. You can imagine almost the two source interference intensity pattern gets kind of squished down to fit underneath the shape of the single slit diffraction pattern. Here's another one from hyperphysics that does a good, gives a good visualization of it. So I can see these are the two source interference maxima. Maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, evenly spaced. On top of that, we draw the single slit quote envelope. And so if, if there weren't diffraction, if light weren't diffracting, this would be maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum. Um, so all of the maximums would be equally intense, but the single slit thing goes on top. So that's what we mean by that. That's going to take some practice. You want to try and draw that and really think about that carefully. That's a tricky concept. Just to show you to it from the IB, this is a, from an IB paper one, I think. Um, there you go. That's this pattern drawn out. So you don't necessarily have to draw this dotted line. It can help, but you can hopefully see here this kind of single slip pattern on top of, and now it comes up, and we'll go down again. It goes up, and we'll go down again. So that's exactly what this is going to look like. They do have you draw this, um, HL students especially. Uh, honestly, this part, the modulation by the single slit envelope, typically they don't ask on the SL exams. They're not supposed to. Um, that part is officially HL material. So yeah, knowing how to draw that though, they will have you draw it. Okay, and so here's a couple pictures of what that looks like, the double slip pattern. Hopefully you see this. You should see this um, in person or in a simulation or something. This is a very, 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 very common pattern. It's a big deal in physics. You want to know the double slit pattern. And so here you can see this graph, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, within this envelope. Here's this. Um, each of these individual dots then, are the two source interference maxima. Bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. And you can kind of see that this thing is overall fits inside of that single slit pattern that we talked about. Here's that bright central maximum of the single slit pattern. So the patterns are combining. That's the idea, the patterns are combining. All right, and again, you can see red versus yellowish orange versus green light. Um, the effect of the wavelength has on the pattern, the spacing will be different. Think about your two source interference equation and why that might happen. Okay, last detail you need to know is sure, that's two slits, but what about more? Why not more slits? And uh, again, HL students, you'll get into this more mathematically, but everybody wants to generally know the effect of adding more and more and more slits. So if I illuminate more and more and more slits, what I see is this, um, a couple things happen. Number one, the maximums, the maxima from the two source interference pattern get narrower. You can see here they're very fringy fringes. They're kind of spread out, smeared out. They gradually go from bright to dark. As I add more slits, they get narrower and narrower and become more like pinpoints of light. The other thing that happens, we would notice, and you can see this better in person, um, but they get brighter. Each of these maxima get brighter. See if you can convince yourself through conservation of energy why that would need to be. Right? Essentially, all of this light is just being condensed into a smaller and smaller space. There's more darkness, so the bright spots must be brighter. Um, and the spacing stays the same. So interestingly, um, when we do this, we're assuming that all of these slits are evenly spaced apart. The distance between the slits is constant from one slit to the next. 
uh, if that's the case, then this spacing uh, S in your two source interference equation is the same everywhere. So bright spot to bright spot here is the same distance as bright spot to bright spot here. You just get narrower and brighter. All right, so that's the effect of adding more and more slits. Again, HL, when we add way more slits, we're going to call it a diffraction grading. And we'll get into the math of that and single slit and all kinds of other exciting stuff. But that's about what you need to know about these different interference patterns. Single slit, double slit, and multi-slit. All right, you want to know them, know them and love them, be able to draw them, be able to identify them, and go from there. All right, have fun.